Aloha, my name is Savannah, and welcome to Oluwalu Ahupua'a in the Moku of Lahaina, located on the west side of Maui. Aloha, my name is Keanu, and today we're going to learn about the importance of Oluwalu Reef. Aloha, my name is Dane. We are also going to be learning about the restoration work done by Kipuka Oluwalu. Oluwalu Ahupua'a extends from Pukakui in the West Maui Mountains to Hekili Point with its fringing reefs. The upper portion of Oluwalu was known to have native forests full of sandalwood and other native hardwoods. In the early 1800s, most of the forest was cleared and the valley became much drier. On the plains below, Hawaiians grew food crops using a network of irrigation ditches from Oluwalu Stream. Oluwalu was known for its dry land taro and its shady breadfruit groves. The salty marshlands near the coast were home to seabirds, fish, and mollusk. Today, Oluwalu still shows signs of its past from when it was a thriving fishing village. The remains of an inland fish pond, as well as several heiau and petroglyphs are still seen today. Oluwalu was also a puuhonua, a place of refuge, for people fleeing conflict or oppression, or those who had broken kapu. There used to be a land connection to Wailuku through Iao Valley. In 1790, at the Battle of Kepani Vai, Kamehameha pushed the Maui forces up into Iao Valley. The Ali'i Kalola, as well as her family and other high chiefs, escaped through Oluwalu Pass. Earlier that year in Oluwalu, Captain Metcalf killed over 100 Hawaiians. This became known as the Oluwalu Massacre. This site in Oluwalu was a sugarcane mill in the 1860s. Population has since declined. It is now a small town with less than 100 residents and a general store that opened in 1932. In 2015, a proposed development plan was halted due to community opposition as well as its possible impacts on the reef. Oluwalu is the location of one of Hawaii's most vibrant reefs, covering almost 1,000 acres. It contains an amazing diversity of rare coral species and acts as a nursery to replenish other reefs of Maui Nui. The sea life includes over 400 manta rays, the biggest population of manta rays in the U.S. Manta ray sightings have dropped around 90% in the past decade, and the reef is suffering as well. In 2015, nearly half of all reefs around the world suffer from coral bleaching, along with Oluwalu. This is suspected to continue as the ocean warms with climate change. The reef closer to land is also being impacted by land-based sedimentation and development. There are also concerns about tour boats and commercial activities impacting the reef. In 2017, Oluwalu was designated as the first Mission Blue Hope spot in Hawaii in an effort to recognize and protect its unique biodiversity. Luckily, Kipuka Oluwalu, located Mauka of the reef, is working to protect it from land-based sedimentation, while also working to restore the area's natural and cultural heritage. Aloha, I'm Ekolu Lindsay. Here at the Oluwalu Cultural Reserve, which started in 1999 through the efforts of Hokulani Holt Padilla, Al Laguanero, uh, Bob Horcajo, John Dewey, Rosemary Dewey, which were the main forces behind this effort, as well as my father, Ed Lindsay. Myself and Kainoa Horcajo, whose dad, Bob, started this project, had picked this back up along with Hinano Rodriguez to reorganize the Oluwalu Cultural Reserve and we're doing it now under uh, Kipuka Oluwalu branding. But the main focus is the same, to protect this space and preserve it for generations to come. So the work restarted back in October. And what you see here is the result of just four months of work. Aloha, my name is Dwayne Sparkman. I'm project manager out here at Kipuka Oluwalu. Uh, this has been a very fun project through CARES Act funding. We've also had a chance to work with Maui Nui Marine Resource Council to give us a lot of good education on what we should do for our coral reefs and how to protect them. That's what we're doing here. We're showing the basically what the public can do in a nice setting to where you can actually grow your own food security and protect the reef at the same time. We have things here like kalo, our lo'is that are growing wetland and dry land. We also have sweet potato called uwala, purple sweet potato as well as yellow sweet potato. Uh, we also have hibiscus that are edible, as well as sunflowers. Uh, we also have beautiful native forests that we've installed to actually put water back into our river system. All of our water comes from the river and we have to put it back. So in our lo'ikalo that flows with water, it flows through, actually collects sediment and runs back right into the river. So we're slowing that turbidity down and we're slowing down that sediment that's washing off into the ocean. So it's very important for us to look at not using chemistry in areas just like this. Us being in a riparian corridor and it being an actual floodplain, 
Anything that I put on this soil has potential to run into the ocean or into the river. And it's gonna end up in the ocean and you're gonna grow invasive algae. We don't want that. So the best thing we can do is use the proper products in the proper way, in the proper areas. So that's what Kipuka Olawalu is about. We wanna spread this information to the public. We want people to come up and see what we've been doing successfully so that that way they can emulate what we do where they live. It's a very easy process and we are here to help. So I just wanna say aloha and mahalo.